So here we are at Electronica 2024 on the ST Microelectronics stand in front of one of our key exhibits, which is the wire harness of a recently released car. It is, it's incredible. I mean, this is the kind of thing that you, you never see in real life. And it's something that is getting a lot of attention and curiosity from the visitors on the stand. One of the things that has struck me the most is the number of cables and wires that we're seeing here. I'm here with Lorenz, one of our product marketing engineers, and he's going to explain to us why ST, as a chip maker and semiconductor company, has an exhibit like this on our stand. Lorenz, great to see you. Tell me why. Hi, Sarah. So yes, here you see a massive power net to bring the energy from the battery to all the loads, lighting, heating elements, steering, sensors, actuators that are distributed across all the ground. So you need 3.6 kilometers of wires, nearly 60 kilograms. Yeah. So it's a massive uh, uh, amount of wire harness that the out engineers together with their suppliers have to put a lot of ingenuity to think how to optimize all this power distribution architecture. Absolutely, I mean, 60 kilos is just, it's huge. You know, it's, uh, it's the weight of a person, right? So yeah, I mean, that's, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, okay, ST. Uh, what are we bringing here to make things more efficient and, and ultimately more sustainable? So for sure, drivers and passengers, as well as the OEMs, want to make sure that this wire harness is robust, is reliable, is safe, and you always have your load supplied. So you can use your infotainment, you can use your lighting, you can use your steering. Mm. And semiconductors help a good deal to make this wire harness optimized, as well as more robust against potential uh, failures, against um, <laughs> Uh, thermal behavior of the of the of the architecture. Mm. So we are replacing already relays in a while, and now we are moving to the next generation, replacing also the melting fuses with electronic fuses. Okay, okay, yeah. So it's kind of a key thing where you're moving from mechanical, what would have been previously mechanical components, to electronic components. Correct. Um, okay, so and I guess this is something that is also kind of opening the way for other added values that we can bring with uh, with electronic components towards future car architectures and so on? Right, there are many of them. For instance, uh, we can support better digitalization architectures and so we define it little. For instance, our products are programmable via SPI interface. This means that you need less hardware, you can use less hardware derivatives, and then end of line, and the tier one or at the OEM, you can configure several parameters. So depending on the car model you have, depending on the load that you want to drive, you configure the right parameters. And if suddenly the load mission profile changes for some reason, you don't need to produce a new hardware ECU or a new hardware module. You can just yes. configure via uh, software, via SPI, these parameters, yeah. and you still have the same functionality. Yeah, so like super flexible, scalable, all that good stuff, right? Correct. So you allow big platform designs yeah. for all the different car models that there will be. Okay, okay, fine. And I guess as well, I mean, when I'm hearing what you're saying there, I'm thinking, you know, really good for key applications like functional safety, for example. So this is also very relevant, right? Especially in the, in the cars with autonomous driving, with advanced yeah. driving, you need to make sure that all your safety relevant laws are always supplied. You cannot have your steering or right. your braking suddenly. No, for sure, yeah, yeah, so yeah. What happens if there's a failure in the architecture? Yeah. This could happen a failure upstream or it could be a downstream. In any case, you need to be able to isolate mm. these failures, detect them, and react on time to secure that the supply of all the other loads remains uh, uh, available. Absolutely. I mean, this is, I think it's a key concern for people today, you know, end users. This is one of the main uh, things that they're thinking about. Kind of difficult to, to visualize it when I'm looking at this baby. Um, will we pop over to our interactive demo to find out a bit more? Sure, let's do that. All right, let's go, guys. Okay, so Lorenz, here we are in front of our interactive demo pod where we're showing loads of really cool videos and concepts about what we think is a way forward for zonal architecture of the cars of tomorrow and also our very cool proof of concept boards. Um, okay, so just to go back to what you were saying earlier, tell me more about overload conditions that we might have to deal uh, yeah, with. So yeah. We have different uh, elements in the power distribution architecture, different main building blocks. We start always with a power rail switch. So this is an element that in case of one of the energy sources, like a battery or a rail to supply it, are, uh, have a failure, we will be able to switch to another power source so mm -hmm. we will always have redundant energy. Then we will move to the PDU, power distribution unit. So here you have several few channels, only high current. You are supplying high current loads like a steering or an engine cooling fan okay. in a combustion engine vehicle, as well as the high performance computers and all the zones. And then you will move to the zone 
where you have several channels. In right. this case, we have 50 channels. Okay. Some customers have even more than 100 channels. Okay. Well, All these modes could have a failure. Let's imagine a seat heating element right. that has an overload condition. Yep. For okay. instance, a short segment. Right. What will happen? All the current will go to this switch to supply this load, mm -hmm. and the rest of the load will remain unsupplied, therefore unavailable. This okay. cannot happen. In such a failure, we need to disconnect as fast as possible. Right, okay. So you have a melting fuse, the reaction will, will be slow, mm -hmm. the fuse will blow at a certain point of time, but this takes tens of milliseconds. Okay. With an e-fuse, like our STSP fuse family, we integrate all this inside the e-fuse, so we will detect and react within less than 100 microseconds. Okay. So this ensures freedom from interference. If there are some loads having an issue, the rest of the loads remain uh, independent. So we have a very stable power net. Okay, okay. So the mechanical fuses work, but uh, the new electronic fuses, they, they work faster and they're nearly more reliable, let's say. Correct. It's okay. a way to ensure functional safety in the new architectures. Yeah, okay, okay. So your, your back is getting a bit colder, but you know your steering wheel is always going to work. Exactly. It's functional. Driver and passengers are Yeah, safe that's, the, that's the priority, which is something that we all, you know, like to know when we get into a car, basically. Okay, great. Um, so, I mean, looking at the, the proof of concept boards that we have here and, you know, knowing all the work that we're doing, that we're developing with current customers and so on, I, I imagine people who are watching the video, they might want to know more about, you know, how to work with us, more about the proof of concepts uh, and so on. What should they do? So they can always contact our sales, our marketing teams, our application engine teams. We also have able boards so they can evaluate. We have simulation tools to support during the design and activity. Uh, and we are always available to clarify all, all these topics. Yeah. You okay. can see more, for instance, for STS Perfuse at our web, st.com slash STS Perfuse. Brilliant. Okay. Well, listen, Lawrence, thank you very much. Very interesting talking to you today. Um, yeah, enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks a lot. And join us at Electronica 2024.